Hello. I guess I'll start now. Um, so my name is Amy, um, and my talk today is called Code, Content, and Crafting Your Online Voice. So I am not an Angular JS person. Um, I am a software engineer. I'm a system software engineer at Heptio. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Amy Codes in my free time. And um, I love to work on all things distributed systems. Um, and day to day, I work on things like Kubernetes, Docker, and Go. Sorry, I'm like, I have like notes on here. OK. And then when I have free time, I like to salsa dance. So this is who I am. And I spent a ridiculous amount of time drawing that photo, <laughs> that picture. Um, I drew it, if you are curious, on my iPad in Keynote with my Apple Pencil. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and in this talk, it's important to also uh, let you know who, all, who I am and how I got here. So uh, I guess I'll just go from the start of like how I got into software engineering in general, um, and then go from there into system software engineering, into Kubernetes, into Docker, into the startup I work at now. Um, so the start of my journey was uh, in college. I wanted to be, uh, like, become a doctor and go to like medical school. And so I was a pre-med. I studied, studied biology and neuroscience. That wasn't really working out because I really hate memorizing shit. Um, and so that was the entirety of the major. Um, so I realized I need to do something else. And so this is like part one of a really awesome serendipitous experience. Um, I don't know if you all remember Omegle. So Omegle was this like online chat roulette sort of thing where like you can get matched with a stranger and you like chat via text with someone. So I had this like five hour conversation with this one person. And then this was also the time that I was like scheduling classes for my next semester. And so I was like, oh, like I, I was talking about like how frustrated I was with my major and like where I was in my life and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I know, really weird with like a online stranger for five hours. But anyways, um, so he suggested I try introduction career science. And so sometimes I can be very impulsive. So I was like, yeah, why the heck not? And I dragged my friend along too. Um, and so then I studied computer science that way. Um, and then that was how I got into computer science. Fast forward a few years, um, I need to look for a full-time job. Um, I had done a few internships and I knew that I didn't want to do uh, like web development anymore. Um, it just wasn't my thing. Like I, I didn't really want to work at the app scale um, or like not only work on the app scale. Um, so then uh, I followed this one person on Twitter and she was talking about Kubernetes and Docker and like Go and all this stuff. Um, and so again, another serendipitous experience um, because my friend told me to follow this person, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna try this thing. So. About like three ish months before I started like full time job hunting, um, I learned Go because I was like, okay, this is the thing that like all of these large projects are using. Um, and so, therefore, if I want to work on these distributed systems projects, then I need to learn Go. So then I did that and then I interviewed uh, a lot for like all these different companies that did the general thing, which is Kubernetes, Docker. Go based stuff. Um, and so then my first job was at Rancher Labs. It was in Arizona. And so what Rancher Labs is, is there's sort of this, um, I would say like a catch all sort of thing for like a bunch of different like t tools. So in, in one point in the first version of Rancher, they had, uh, you could plug and play like different orchestrators, for instance, and then they would do secret management um, and they would do a lot of uh, like RBAC stuff for you and they would like launch clusters for you. Um, and so that was my, my first job, which was awesome. Um, and then I decided I didn't really like Arizona. <laughs> um, I, Largely because, like, nothing, no shade against Arizona, it was just like not my thing. Um, it was also just really hot during the summers, and I was not used to that. Um, it was like, so you know how you have to like change your car batteries like every five years or so? So I just got a car, the battery is definitely new, and I changed it within like eight months. Um, so that was pretty crazy because it was like 120 for an entire week, 
And then when it was not 120, it was like 110 during the summers. It was so hot that like literally planes could not lift from the tarmac because they were like, this. it's just, it's just that hot. But uh, anyways, <laughs> so then um, I interviewed at Heptio, which is where I am now. And what they do is, is they, how do I describe this? So mainly they're like, I would say they are a distributed systems company and their current focus right now, the easiest way to say is they make Kubernetes easier to use. So before I like talk about like, when I say Kubernetes and Docker, are people familiar with both those things? Yes, can you raise your hand? Okay. Um, no, can you raise your hand? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to like quickly talk about this for a second. It's not actually relevant to my talk or anything, but it's just like good to just talk about it. So what is um, a container? Basically, it is a like you can think of it. You can think of the representation as a configuration file, which you then launch into like you launch that configuration into an environment. So this is a, an easy way to like replicate different um, development environments, testing environments, and things like that. When you are deploying your apps into production, you can define something like, um, I want, you know, like uh, Alpine 3.6 um, in this container, and I also want to install Python version 2. Point whatever into this container, and then I want to deploy my app in this container um, within this specific environment with this set of setup scripts. And so um, that's, kind of quickly what a container is. And then in terms of what Kubernetes is, there's a lot of things on top of your container that you need, which is, um, and it's called an orchestrator. So you need to think about like things like networking, um, uh, scheduling, like where, so some questions are like, where, how do the containers talk to each other? Where do the containers live? Uh, what happens if my container dies? Like life cycle type of stuff. Um, and so that's like the general area that I'm in and I'm interested and I love to do. Oh, also it's just like talking about like scale. So let's say all of a sudden you have like really high traffic with this like really high search term or something like that. Um, or like your, your web app gets like a lot of high traffic. Um, Kubernetes can help you like scale really quickly with like auto scaling and, and things like that. Um, and so that's kind of what I think about day to day. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with my slides, which is, you know, like getting to know each other. So, all right, cool. Um, so today, this is like the first time I'm gonna talk about what this, this slide is about, or um, this talk. First time I'm mentioning what this talk is about. And um, mainly I just wanted to talk to you all about building a personal brand. So I think that a lot of software engineers mainly focus on code, right? Because that's what you're paid to do, right? You're paid to write code, think about systems and things like that. Um, and when I talk about building a personal brand, I think there is a lot of privilege entailed in that in the sense of like, um, there's things that you need to do to build a personal brand, but these are um, a lot of these things are things you can keep into consideration. Like if you want to like schedule it during your work day, um, because it's also beneficial to your employer as well. So you don't have to go as crazy as I do because I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and I do a lot of things um, that I'm about to talk to you about, but uh, you can take like a couple things that you really want to like focus in on and like work into your day to day. So, um, Again, I don't think a lot of software engineers think about personal brands a lot. Um, and I think they should because it has been super like professionally beneficial. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about is uh, how to do it and what exactly it is. Um, a personal brand is definitely not just a logo. Um, and it's not just about the content that you create. Um, a personal brand is an identity. It's about your audience. It's about the content. It's about how you deliver that content. And then it's also about the community you build around that brand or a community that you take part in as a part of that brand, um, like an existing community. So um, I don't actually know how long this talk is going to be. It might be really short. We'll see. <laughs> um, 
so identity. Uh, identity, like I think there's a lot of ways to like cut this, right? So identity, um, the main question is who are you? Um, please don't go into an existential crisis. Uh, I'm still figuring this out myself. So uh, some things I like to do as an exercise to think about identity is like, what are some adjectives uh, that describe you and the brand that you want to create? So another thing is like, for instance, like, does the brand represent you? Is it like, are you the brand? Or is it for instance, um, like on YouTube, like uh, for instance, like these people, they they, they uh, act as like characters um, and that's the entirety of their YouTube brand. And that doesn't necessarily like reflect who they are as like real life people, right? Or like, yeah, like if you were an actor, maybe there are certain types of um, typecasted roles that you wanna pursue. So that sort of thing, um, like, being able to specifically focus on like the adjectives that describe your brand. So for me, I am my brand. So I want these things to describe me. Um, and these are things that I want people to associate with my personal brand. Um, and so for instance, like things I like to think about is when I'm writing anything in text, um, I want people to be able to interpret that plain text um, with the adjectives that I think of. So like, I want people who understand my personal brand to like understand when I'm using sarcasm, which is a fuck ton. Uh, <laughs> and, um, or I want them like to think, like to understand my humor and things like that. Um, if, if they interact with me a lot. So um, this was like a really great exercise that I did. So in terms of like aesthetics of, of my personal brand, what I really want it to be is feminine, um, modern and clean. Um, I think I really picked those adjectives because like the reason I picked them is because um, I think that within the tech industry, there's not a lot of that. And people who do present like as very feminine um, and like have like a very modern clean vibe, uh, it's, it's not really often. Um, and so just kind of like making this more acceptable and also it's just who I am. So it's just like, whatever, this is me kind of thing. Um, and so in terms of like the voice that I really want people to interpret when they read something textual is, uh, I'm pretty irreverent all the time. So I don't really like want to stick to the status quo all the time. Um, I want people to think of the content that I create to be practical. So I want them to be able to, you know, like, uh, like use the advice that I provide. Um, I want it to be approachable. So especially since I work in distributed systems, um, and I'm not to like put an age on myself, but like I'm, I'm pretty new in my career. Um, being approachable is really important to me because I don't think there's a lot of like college new grads or people earlier in their career that like do distributed systems or like, you know, work on Kubernetes or like work, work with containers and things like that. Um, and that's kind of annoying <laughs> um, because like walking to a room, I would like to have peers that like, you know, like that look similar to me that I can relate to kind of thing. And I would like to enable, um, other people uh, to also like uh, enter this industry. And also to be honest, like I'm not saying the stuff is hard, but I'm, I mean, I'm not saying the stuff is easy, but I'm not saying, but I'm also saying that it's like not ridiculously hard either. So why not have more people enter this industry? And it pays really well too. <laughs> um, the other thing is I really want people to be empowered when they walk away. like. Uh, you know, either from my talk today or from like content that I create because um, that's great. And I would love to empower more people like, so like the, another part of the reason I do this is because like, I think people think that like gaining an audience is like, you know, a zero sum game, which is not, it's like, why just have try to like cut a slice of the pie if you can just like make a bigger pie kind of thing. So if like more people are doing what I do, then I can have more peers to like talk about like similar problems that we have. And then we can have sort of like cross pollination in terms of like audience and things like that. By the way, I drew all these slides. So, you know, um, so this is like something I think about a lot. Um, and I think that there's a lot of wrong ways to go about this. So there, 
like if you're trying to create a personal brand and also like a big if you're trying to build an audience, which I'm trying to do and maybe you are too, is um, there are plenty of people willing to rally around the brand that you create. Okay. So the thing that I would want you to focus on is like you don't want to go overboard like following trends or like playing to the algorithm, like whatever, like, you know, Twitter algorithm, YouTube algorithm or whatever, you know, the algorithm kind of thing. Um, your target audience should really follow you like should your target audience will follow after you figure out your core identity. Um, because like the way to determine your audience is just people who want to follow you and your personal brand and your core identity. Um, so what I'm trying to say is don't let, uh, don't chase the audience, let the audience chase you. Because like people can literally build an audience from the most niche things ever. So like that's not the hard part, right? The hard part is really getting that like core nailed down and like really understanding what message you're trying to trying to give off and like going back to our previous side, like understanding like some adjectives of like what you want your personal brand to be, like what message you want to try to like send to the world. Um, after you figure out your identity, then you can figure out what kind of person likes the content that you create, right? So like that, like I think is um, something people sort of lose sight of, especially in the world of YouTube where they're like, oh, these are like very specific things that, um, these are very specific strategies to build a, a larger audience. And like, I'm not saying, so let me give like more concrete examples. Um, so. Uh, a lot of people like to do A-B testing for thumbnails and things like that. I'm not saying don't do that, but like um, really make sure your thumbnail, for instance, represents who you are. Or like people will talk about uh, certain types of content that does really well on YouTube. Um, like they'll be like, oh, you should just make it 10 minutes. You should um, use really like clickbaity titles. Um, and they'll talk about how like their content is in relation to the algorithm. Um, which I don't think is the right way to go. I think the most like long lasting um, like content creators that I've seen both on YouTube or via blog posts or different things, they really have a sense of who they are and like what message they're trying to portray and they just like keep on drilling that home uh, to everyone. So yeah, like don't worry about your audience until you know who you are. Um, and that's the, the most important thing. I also really like this slide just because like the pictures are cute. Just to like take a second to appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So uh, like maybe you don't want to build a personal brand around technical content. This is just what I am doing. Uh, but content is the physical representation of your brand, of your identity. So again, it just goes back to that first slide. Um, or rather, fourth, no, fifth slide. The, the slide about identity. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a physical representation of that. So once again, like drill back to what you, what kind of original message and voice and tone that you want to give off. And then your content comes in after that and where you can kind of like color it with your, your, with your voice. So there's lots of different kinds of technical content that you can create. Um, tutorials, I sometimes do non-technical aspects of software engineering. So let me just sort of show you my YouTube channel. Eh. Okay, so here's my YouTube channel. Let's see what I have. Uh, oh, let me actually open up to a larger video. Oh, I can, never mind. So like, for instance, one day I was like uh, locked out of my laptop because I, my laptop, I don't know what I was doing with my Linux machine. Um, but for some, I think I like wiped it and then didn't install it correctly. And so then it like booted to like a grub terminal or something like that, um, which is like a bootloader. Uh, so then I was like, crap, how do I get out of this into my normal machine? And so then I made a tutorial about that. Um, I've also done, talked about like Apache web servers and SSL termination. So those are like technical tutorials kind of thing. And then the other like non technical stuff is like um, I give tips about uh, growing your career. I talk. I like interviewed um, Jessica Lynn, who is uh, from 
works. I forget what VC fund she was part of. Workflow, workspace, something like that. Um, but she does, she's a VC at an enter, uh, which their focus is on enterprise technology companies. So I've interviewed her. I've like done a vlog where like people follow me in the day of a life of a tech conference speaker. So this was at that was at um, Gotham Go. Um, I talked to my friend Mayuko about like what it's like being a, shop, a tech YouTuber, stuff like that, or other topics like uh, you know imposter syndrome and computer science, um, things like that. So. There's like lots of ways that you can create content. Um, I mainly just like to focus it around myself because I know that if people are invested in who I am a, as a human being, they're more likely to like ingest the con the content that I like shove down their throats. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, and also it's just like your brand follows you. So let's say like my interest changes um, and I don't want to be in tech anymore and I want to go live in a van, for instance. Um, I do, I love my job, I do enjoy tech, but I do also eventually want to go live in a van. Um, then they can follow me in my life about living in a van and like they can see this entire transition and things like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Let's see, okay. So we can, let's go ahead and talk about like misconceptions about technical content. Uh, people are often like, they, they are concerned about originality. Um, and they're like, oh, like people already read about this topic. So what I have to say about that is like, people don't really care about originality. Um, in the sense of like, you have a lot to offer still in terms of like the perspective you, you have to offer and like the way that you came across this problem. And so you can give, you can sort of like give new life to, um, like a topic or like whatever problem that you came up with that that you came across. So originality doesn't matter. Just don't be an asshole and plagiarize people. Um, uh, there's another misconception where it's like, oh, this is like such an easy problem. It was such a dumb mistake. Like um, people are dumb, and also your problem it probably isn't dumb, and it's probably actually the documentation that. Is, was really bad. So you might as well just like write a blog post about it. And someone I'm sure will like love you for like writing that blog post. I think I like, when I was in college, I like wrote this like art, like a, this um, blog post about like rsync or something. And it was literally just like how to get something from source to destination and like vice versa. Um, and it was like viewed a lot. And like everyone in my college really um, during my CS program really enjoyed it because like we had to, uh, uh, send files back and forth from our like school server thingy back to our laptop and stuff like that. So people really enjoyed how to like do rsync. Uh, who who would have thought? So you never know. Um, or like people are like, oh, like I need to be an expert about this thing. Um, no, I've literally signed up for talks or like know nothing about the abstract that I wrote about. And I was like, well, this is a forcing function. <laughs> I might as well write this, <laughs> this talk and learn about this topic. Um, I just sort of like knew enough about like, basically like when that happens, I just sort of like research enough about the topic, enough to write an abstract. And then I just, like cram, learn about a thing in the week beforehand, and then all of a sudden, hey, I'm an expert, um, and people could never know. Um, so, cool. So now, hopefully, you're convinced. So, like, maybe once in a while, I'll write some technical content. I can talk about ideation. So, I keep a notebook next to my desk. Well, actually, now I have my iPad. I love my iPad so much. It's so great. So, the Apple Pencil is like a really great experience. Um, it, that's like, I'm, I, you know, I'm not being promoted by Apple, but you know, I love it. It's really great. So um, now I keep my iPad and I like write down notes next to my desk of like any little tiny problem that I have of like, if there's missing documentation about this thing. Um, currently, because I'm working in Kubernetes, the thing that makes me cry uh, is that like, so, I mean, it's not Kubernetes' fault because the project is very new and there's like a lot of development going on. Um, but there's like not a lot of documentation about using the Kubernetes client, for instance. And so I literally have to like read the code to understand how to like use this thing. Um, and then yes, I should just contribute documentation, but like I'm getting to it. Uh, so I keep a notebook next to my desk of all the little problems I have and then voila, all of a sudden it's a, it's a blog post, it's a YouTube video, it's like a talk, it's something. Um, so the ideation, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I think of things. 
Um, and then I also talked, I already talked to you all about the other thing where it's like, I think of a topic, uh, a very distant topic that I want to learn about. And then I submit a abstract CFP for that and it becomes a forcing function. So um, different kinds of forms your technical content can come in. Maybe I didn't think of all of them. Um, YouTube, which is what I do. Blog post, I used to do that. Um, Zines, I forget her name. I only remember her Twitter handle. Julia. <laughs> Julia? Yeah. So she, Julia Evans has like really awesome designs and stuff like that. And it's like really great, super approachable. She like breaks down really hard topics and like puts them into signs. Um, the other person I can think of that does signs is a uh, Sailor HG. I think her name is also Amy. Um, she does computer science topics. I think she's had a sign about like graph theory or something like that. Uh, and then the other thing is conference speaking. I do a lot of that. It's a lot of fun. Although now I really need to like just actually think of conference talks as like this is work because um, I was on like this like binge where I like would go to conference like every other weekend and then like it would take away my entire Sunday. So if you're gonna do a conference talk, go home on Fridays. That's my number one tip. <laughs> um, because like or like go home on Saturday at least because you need like you really do need time to unwind. Um, and also like you're actually paid to code, so you might want to like balance that. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of that. Um, and uh, technical content is great, and there should be more of it because uh, you know developers really suck at like writing documentation and stuff like that sometimes. <laughs> uh, let's talk about delivery. So you you know you've got your brand, uh, you've you've thought of like you know the identity, you've thought about your audience, you've thought about your technical content, and how do you deliver your content, um, and where does your brand actually live? So. Besides like the the previous things, like besides on YouTube, besides on like maybe Medium or your own personal blog um, or like a Zine or at conference talks, your brand, um, there needs to be like a central place of truth and also places where you can deliver your content. So for me, um, I use Twitter a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, my handle's on the top right hand corner. So um I use Twitter a lot. I use Facebook groups. Facebook groups are great because they have very concentrated like communities that you can really target. So um, in, co in college, I started this online community called Ladies Storm Hack Events. I think it's like 12,000 people large now. Uh, and it was just, I like wanted to make friends because I was like, you know, like I go to a lot of these college hackathons and it's a lot of dudes who need to learn how to use deodorant and I need to make friends. So then Facebook happened and I made that Facebook group and then other women were like, oh my God, same girl, let's hang out. So then, um, so oftentimes they are, I, I target like a lot of my content towards like that demographic of women, like young, um, like new, like early career, college sometimes. Um, but although I'm trying to like advance the, the levels of people who, who like, pulling my content. So another thing is a Slack community. So for instance, Golang, they have a great online Slack channel, um, a Slack organization. And so you can like dish your content there. Um, or another way is like through collaborations, um, that way you get more exposure kind of thing. I think people are oftentimes ashamed of self-promotion a lot. Um, I am not. And sometimes I like preface with like shameless self-promotion on Twitter a lot, but like, now I should stop doing that because honestly, I just view it as like I have something to say or I have something I'm really um, excited about and I really would just want to share it to the world. I think there's a definite difference between being promotional and just being pure excited and that you want to share your content. Like I'm not like trying to be like, hey, you, you should buy this thing. And like people can sniff out when you're trying to sell them something. So there's nothing wrong with that goal. Um, but like there's a way to do it where it's that you're first excited about the thing that you're excited about and then naturally they'll want to do the thing that you're secretly promoting about, um, secretly or not so secretly promoting about. Um, and the, is this the last thing? Oh no, it's not the last thing. So, uh, and the next thing is um, building a community around your brand. So. There's a difference, I think, between community and audience, where I think community will advocate for you without being prompted to do so. 
So I think this is a sort of this aspect is a is a sort of thing that helps you build, uh, maintain momentum, gain velocity in terms of like gaining more of an audience if that's what if that's what you're looking for. Um, so like if your core community is not healthy, is not engaged in your brand, then you need to either revisit your identity and or the audience that you're targeting because maybe you have a well. I, I, uh, defined identity, but the audience you're targeting isn't appropriate for, for what you're, you're pushing at them. So um, the other thing I'd like to touch upon is like building a community is just uh, uh, as much about who you exclude as who you include. Um, I learned this lesson when I was like, um, like, like when I was building the online community that I was talking to you all about, because one bad actor can turn your entire community off, um, off from your personal brand. Um, like if you do not act promptly, if you do not admit faults, um, people will immediately be like, oh, I'm out. And then you can never ever get them back. Also, there's a back channels and they'll just, just like, uh, they'll, they'll like, you know, let other people know and it like spreads really quickly. So, um, when there was like a lot of situations in building the online community that I learned about where it's just like immediately I'm at fault, apologize for this piece of person being part of the community and then kick them out. Because um, like if I think that having one bad actor especially really affects uh, underrepresented minorities where um, they see you not doing anything and, they, and then the trust is just immediately lost. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, it's It's, as much about like building an audience as much about curating and kicking people out. Um, Van Hammer, I use it a lot. So um, we've talked about what is a brand, how to build one, um, why do I have one? This is my last slide and I'll go through a lot of the reasons really quickly. So why have a brand? I wanna be seen as a domain expert in the respective industry that I'm in. Um, I to be honest, also job security, um, because you never know what will happen with your job. And I would like people to associate uh, different things with my personal brand. So Kubernetes, Docker, um, distributed systems, Go, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, when you have a per personal brand, things will be appropriately credited to you and people will associate things, these things with, with you. Um, there was like this, this was also another reason I want to build a personal brand because like, some of it sourced from negative experience, a lot of it sourced from positive experience. The negative experience was like, um, I don't know, I was like, I was doing, there, there was just basically this experience in college where like I was doing something and I was just not appropriately credited for it because I just never like tagged my name on everything that I did. Um, and so now I do that. So, it, and it's been great because then it's resulted in, in like, you know, financial gain. It's it resulted in just like, uh, having influence within my industry, stuff like that. So other things are like cool opportunities, like to travel a lot, um, like, or just like unlisted jobs, like people like push them at me because they're like, oh, you are out there, like you know what you're talking about kind of thing. Um, so that's been, been awesome. Um, also, I, I like being given the benefit of the doubt if I'm like in a position where I need to like go for a job interview or I need to like, would otherwise have to prove myself. I'm like, here is my repertoire of things that I know about you do the work to figure it out. And if you didn't do the work to invest like your time in understanding what I know, then I don't really want to spend my time like pursuing this opportunity kind of thing. I just hate proving myself and I would just rather give them everything they need to understand what I know and just be like, yes, we can hire her or no, we don't want to, or just like, yes, we can give her this opportunity kind of thing. Um, I like to be able to influence people in my technical community. So this is building, um, like trust and respect in what I have to say. And like what I have to say is like, I put a lot of effort into thinking about these things. Um, and so that's been really useful. Um, having entire topics being associated to you. So being a per point, per point, blah, 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 point person, people can ask for resources kind of thing. So again, like a lot of the times people in Go community, they come to me or um, in the Kubernetes community kind of thing. Um, and so that's been great. Um, and inspiring and enabling other people. So I've talked about this before, but like distributed systems doesn't exactly have people that look like me or are similar to me. Um, and so being able to like 
making it not like a far-fetched idea that you too can do distributed like do stuff in distributed systems and uh work on the things that i do has been really great um and yeah so hopefully you too want to you know like build a personal brand um after my talk today yeah i'm just curious um what's your thoughts on someone let's say who is further along their career not somebody starting like yourself like yeah that, but somebody that's just been in the industry for the last year yeah, so no, absolutely. I mean, so for instance, um, so I'm not a developer evangelist or developer advocate or anything, um, but like the most successful developer advocates that I've seen are people who had just like years of like, you know, dumpster fire experiences that they've had and like how they recuperated from that. And so if your goal is to build a technical brand, like sharing those stories is awesome. So like one person that really comes to mind to me is Kelsey Hightower. He's, um, uh, he works at Google um, and he's a developer advocate for, for Kubernetes and stuff like that. I think he's a developer advocate. I may be wrong, but he has a very strong personal brand in that like people really trust what he has to say. He has a lot of stories to tell um, and people just in the community like really know who he is. So like, there's also like, I would say a gradient of like how much you want to invest into this, right? Like I recognize that I'm coming from a place of privilege and that like, I don't have kids, I don't have a spouse, I don't have a mortgage kind of thing. And so like, it's just a useful tool that has been beneficial to me. And if you do want to do it, here are some, some options for you to be able to do it. Yeah. I have no life. <laughs> um, so like if I'm not doing YouTube, I'm also working on stuff at my startup. So like I just a lot, a lot. So like usually I like spend my Saturdays like thinking about YouTube videos or like making YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I've both invested time and money into this. So like, again, like I don't think that you need to be like, go as crazy as I do it. <laughs> um, I just know a lot about it. Um, so like, these are just some things that I do, yeah. Any other questions? Cool, thank you for having me.